Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for coming. I know it's a bit of time uh, at a busy time of year, and um, this is a sort of a, a venue you might not have been to before, but I think it's a great place uh, to be, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm delighted to have with me the prototype of the latest Google um, Pad, um, which is going to help me get through uh, this session. And um, also, uh, I thought we'd use a bit of a gallery theme for, for the introduction to Think Cross Channel, since we're in this amazing venue, which has got a, a great art gallery, which unfortunately is shut uh, today. Um, so we'll have to make our own art. And we've got a great uh, lineup of artists uh, to do that. Now, this, this presentation was kind of titled The End of Digital. And I think the point of that was, you know, the, go back to the early days of electricity. Companies, some of them, had a head of electricity because it was new, it was scary, it could increase your productivity, but it could also kill you. Now, digital's not quite as uh, dangerous as that, I'd argue, but lots of people are in the stage of having digital experts that are now trying to kind of reintegrate into their business, and that was the idea of the end of digital. Have we reached that end yet? Where are we? How many people think they've figured out digital? OK. Um, why are we doing an event on cross-channel when we haven't even figured out digital? I think because it's here, it's now, it's real, and it's very, very big. And um, we have to start figuring it out as well. And actually, we're quite good at digital in the UK. We haven't figured it all out, but we're quite good at it. I'll talk a little bit about that as well. So um, my job really is to spend a couple of minutes just uh, introducing some of the themes of the day and trying to set things up. I'm kind of the, the warm-up man. And I'm going to try to make some links, just like the link between online and offline is not that well understood. Some of my links might not be so well understood. So think cross-channel. I wanted uh, actually to brand this event uh, Think King's Cross Channel because of the venue, which I thought was good, and also topical with the King's speech. Um, but let's just start with King's Cross, actually. It's a quite a good metaphor for where we are. King's Cross uh, and St Pancras developed over 150 years ago. Uh, King's Cross named after uh, George IV, uh, hence the Regent's Canal and some of the other architecture around, around the place. And it was where all of the fresh produce uh, for London and the southeast arrived from all over the country, fruit and veg arriving in that massive uh, goods yard there, underlining really the transformational nature of the rail infrastructure to the UK economy. Really transformational, and you know, UK at the forefront of the development uh, of railway. Today, it's the biggest single development area uh, in London that has been seen for 150 years, 67 uh, acres, um, 8 million square feet being redeveloped there. And at the centre of it, and if you wander down the street, you might have seen this, they're building uh, the Design University, which is based on St Martin's College and other great um, institutions, and it's going to open in September. So what a great metaphor from fruit and veg, a nexus of fruit and veg, to a nexus of creativity and innovation. We're here in the building where The Guardian is now based, uh, bringing great British content to the world. And as Peter said, we've got the international connection uh, of St Pancras as well. So a great metaphor for the transformational power of the railways and now the transformational power of the internet. Tenuous link number one. Watch out, it's going to get worse because tenuous link number two is from King George IV to King George VI, the King's Speech, a story of one man's triumph um, against adversity and the nation's uh, adversity faced during the, uh, during the Second World War. Great international acclaim for that story, great British content reaching an international audience and doing a fantastic job. Colin Firth's not the only person to be congratulated, though, because uh, last year, uh, at the end of last year, actually, we put together um, a report with Boston Consulting Group, the Connected Kingdom, because we wanted to share with the world some of the stuff that we could see from our business, working with uh, all of you and many small businesses up and down the country, which is that, um, actually, the internet economy in the UK is incredibly successful. BCG and the pointy-headed economists that they were able to field um, looked at the GDP contribution from uh, the internet and calculated it's £100 billion a year. That's 7% of GDP. And much like the early days of electricity, it's kind of scattered through all different industries, um, some more, some less. And so it doesn't show up when you kind of measure utilities or transport or communications. But 7% of GDP already, growing fast, potentially by 2015, 10 or 13% of GDP, depending on how much more this thing accelerates. And the great um, uh, other thing they did was they created a kind of league table of e-commerce by nation. And we come out top, top nation worldwide in terms of consumer spending on e-commerce on uh, UK websites. So we're actually quite good at this stuff, just like Colin Firth. We're quite good at this stuff. We may be stuttering into it, but we're quite good at this stuff on a global scale. That's a huge opportunity for anybody with a traditional or an online business, because you can now reach... 2 billion consumers nearly worldwide 
uh, free on the internet. And when you think about that, that changes the nature of your business. And looking forward to hear uh, how various people are dealing with that challenge and that opportunity as we go through the day. So that's uh, the King and King's Cross and uh, the opportunity that the UK has uh, in digital. Five of the top ten e-commerce players are now traditional retailers in the UK. So let's have a look at some of the other art. It's definitely an art rather than a science, this kind of cross-channel thing. Um, so what are some of the things uh, that are going on? Well, clearly, we have millennia of experience of working in markets and working in shops. You do a store visit with somebody like Ian Cheshire, um, they instinctively understand what's going on in the store. They can feel in their bones the dynamics of retailing. We're not quite there with the internet, only 10 years old, not millennia old. And now we've got the complicating factor of mobile commerce, and we'll hear about that, which is really the bridge between on and offline. So how do we put all of that together? I mean, a few points of view on that. Firstly, you have to be fast. The pace of change is accelerating, and it's breathless. So Mary Meeker, um, a great analyst of the technology sector, uh, only this um, summer, or only last summer, uh, projected that by 2013, smartphone sales were going to overtake PC sales. By 2013. So connected devices overtaking the traditional computers. Do you know what? She was wrong. It happened at Christmas. This is, <laughs> you know, this is probably one of the best analysts of the technology sector, and yet consumer demand on this stuff is picking up really, really fast. So it's moving fast and it's getting faster, and the advent of the mobile phone and e-commerce closing that loop between on and offline is going to continue to transform the way consumers interact with your, you know, your businesses and ours. Next thing, this is an early version of the Google logo, which we discarded. Um, but making friends, so being fast, but also making friends. Many of you are working in organizations where the digital guys were the kind of like the head of electricity. Uh, scary things could kill you, stay away from them. And now they're having to make friends across the organization because the consumer expects a consistent experience. Um, but it's not just about the marketing angle, because what we're seeing increasingly when our teams work with uh, traditional businesses is that it's actually people who are the category buyers who really are hungry for what digital can bring them, because they don't just bring uh, a one-way conduit. They bring, uh, digital brings to them information and insight about, about, about what people are doing right now, information and insight that can change what they buy and improve their uh, approach to buying and assortment and intelligence about what's going on, real-time data transforming how business is done. So making friends across the organization. Facts. You know, I, I love the phrase the hippo, the highest paid person's opinion, can be overruled by fact. Fact, I wanted to call it Think King's Cross Channel. Fact, Peter overruled me because he said nobody would like it. Um, but it's that kind of thing. When you can put ideas out there and test them and get real feedback all of the time, and when the pure plays like Amazon are doing 30, 40, 50 or more split A-B tests on their homepage at any one time, and we're doing one or two, we know that there's an opportunity to improve by getting real-time feedback. And obviously, our business is completely based on that. Every time somebody searches, we get data back in terms of what they click that helps us to improve the experience for the future. And then finally, stretching or going feet first. One of the big opportunities of the digital age um, for traditional businesses is uh, to test and learn all the time. The art and the science uh, the insight and the inspiration, how do we put these things together and get feedback uh, so that we can uh, do things better and faster and meet the consumer's needs better than ever before. So just some of the themes that I think we're going to be starting to hear about today. There are a lot more people out there doing this for real um, who uh, we're going to hear from. I'm delighted um, with the, uh, the people we're going to be hearing from today. I hope we can make it really interactive so there'll be opportunities to ask questions uh, all the way through. Um, but that's a, a starting approach in lieu of the closed art gallery upstairs, uh, that's my kind of artistic approach to thinking about the themes for today. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>